Salam alaikum and good evening and a very warm welcome to The Health Show. Uh, it's good to have you with us this evening uh, on this lovely June evening. Um, on tonight's show, uh, we're going to discuss something a little bit uncomfortable uh, for some people, something quite emotive, something that's got a moral um, and ethical dimension to it. And that's the subject of organ donation. Organ donation is a big issue in the UK. We have a number of people on the organ donation register, um, and I believe something in the region of 20% of people waiting for organs are members of the BAME community here in the UK. It's a difficult subject. Um, it's one that uh, we'd like to come from uh, from a very factual point of view. And here on The Health Show, we always talk in terms of medical uh, information and facts and giving people uh, choices in terms of their care and management of their problems and illnesses. But this is something slightly different. Um, so really, before we begin the show, and we've got, a, we've got an excellent uh, colleague uh, as our guest tonight, Dr. Omar Aziz, who's the paediatric ITU consultant from Bristol Children's Hospital, who we're very, very grateful to have on the show. Um, but before I introduce him, I wanted to introduce you to a small uh, snippet of uh, video that we have from uh, a mufti uh, by the name of uh, Mufti Muhammad uh, Butt, who is uh, based in Bradford. Um, in 2019, he issued um, a fatwa opinion on organ donation. Uh, and it's important that we understand the sort of Islamic context of this. Um, and we'll be showing you some, some uh, video shortly of that. It's important to say that there are lots of different schools of thoughts um, in terms of organ donation. Some people are more comfortable with it than others. Um, and it is an area that's up for debate amongst scholars. Um, so uh, Mufti Bhatt has been a 20-year veteran of uh, NHS chap uh, hospital chaplaincy and has done a lot of research into the subject. So we're just going to run this video for you now shortly uh, for you to have a look at. So we'll just have a look at what uh, Mufti Bhatt had to say. My starting position on organ donation was live donation is permissible. Uh, donation after death was something I was unsure of and I had several questions. Um, after the, my inquiry, I moved my position a little. In terms of donation after circulatory death, my understanding of position is that once it is categorically determined that the person is dead, then the um, cessation of the heart and lungs is irreversible, then donation after that can take place. In, the in relation to donation after brain stem death or neurological death, my conclusion was that whilst you have a person on a ventilator where and uh, other functions of the body continue, it, it is not possible to conclude that the person is dead in Islam, in my opinion. And so therefore, we would need to actually turn off the ventilator and our circulatory death to happen before the organs can be uh, Retrieved. My message to Muslims in the UK on organ donation would be to have this conversation amongst yourselves, to have this conversation with your local imam, with your scholar that you would normally refer to, and also for the scholars and imams themselves to have this conversation amongst themselves. So that's the opinion of, of uh, uh, Mufti Butt, and we're very grateful to the NHS for allowing us to share that, that video with you tonight. As he suggested in his video, we're going to start talking, he wants to start a conversation, and that's exactly what we're here to do tonight. To join us in that conversation, we're delighted to welcome uh, Dr. Omar Aziz. He's a paediatric intensive care consultant at Bristol Children's Hospital. Dr. Aziz, good evening to you, and very warm welcome to the Health Show. Zakla, thank you for in, uh, the invitation. Salaam alaikum. Good to, good to have you with us. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, lots of questions for you this evening. So I'm going to sort of kick off immediately with if you could perhaps give us and the viewers a, a kind of background to what organ donation actually is, please, Omar. Uh, so um, there are certain medical conditions that uh, might uh, render certain organs uh, failing, for example, kidney failure, heart failure, lungs uh, failing, that in order for the individual to continue in terms of the quality of life uh, or uh, in terms of survivability, you know, they might need a uh, transplant. 
obviously in order for that to happen then it has to be an organ available from another individual so this organ donation can occur in two contexts the first is a live uh, donation or a, a living donation where an individual donates um, a non-essential organ for example a kidney because everyone's owned well, by most people have two kidneys so and they can live on one kidney so they might decide to donate one kidney to uh, the person who has a kidney failure for example and mm. um, that's the vast majority of living donation and there's a slight increase in the number of uh, donations that uh, you can donate for example a part of your liver as well um, the other uh, sort of context in which donation can occur is once a person has deceased, and that's what uh, Mufti Zubal Bhatt has been talk talked about in that short clip, and there's a, a longer clip available on the NHS BT uh, website. And that occurs in the context after someone is, has died, so um, after the heart has stopped, they stop breathing, and then the relevant organs have retrieved. The also, one of the in the UK, there's two definitions of death. So either your heart and uh, your um, breathing stops, and you're declared deceased after five minutes, or um, you can be declared deceased after uh, brainstem death, which is a, a, a specialized sort of test that uh, the medical professionals or experienced medical professionals would do, and then repeat, and then um, they can see. And, and uh, sort of then determine that an individual has deceased, although mm -hmm. they might still be on a ventilator and their heart still be going. And that fulfills the le legal definition of death within the UK. So uh, so after that's occurred, uh, you, then you can also retrieve certain organs. I know there's different schools of thought about the uh, permissibility of um, brainstem testing, as Mufti Zubali Bhatt has already alluded to, uh, but that's the two contexts in which uh, organ donation can occur. Okay, so quite a quite a lot to so two definitions of death, which is quite interesting that people perhaps didn't know before. Mm. Um, so just for clarity, uh, Dr. Omar, what is the current UK law on organ donation? So um, in the UK, there's a opt out system. So, or presumed consent. As of May uh, 2020, um, England um, adopted this law, whereas um, Wales had adopted this, uh, I believe, in 2015. And earlier this year, Scotland has also adopted it in March. So this is that anyone, um, who, all adults above the age of 18, mm. uh, provided that they've been in that resident country for at least a year, are presumed to give consent right. to uh, for organ donation. However, um, it's really important to realise that um, there's a lot of misconceptions mm. in uh, particularly sort of certain communities that um, it's assumed that no one's going, the relatives will um, have no say in this. Mm. That's categorically incorrect. Um, the government will take over your organs. Again, that's completely categorically uh, incorrect. Mm. Mm. So the last say will be with your relatives from that point. So that's important to realise because there's a lot of misinformation out there. Mm. The whole purpose of um, the change in the law was to facilitate um, the discussion around organ donation, mm. which is important in um as you've already alluded to in the sort of BAME communities the likelihood of each of us as individuals being in a position to donate is actually far less compared to the likelihood of us actually needing an organ so um as an individual i'm more far more likely to need an organ rather than to be actually in a position to donate because you can only one percent of all deaths that occur in the uk are in a position to donate and that's important to realize okay so two two really important points i'd like to i'd like to sort of tease out of you if possible dr Alma. firstly when you say that in the bame community where there's there's this disparity between the need for the need for the organ and the likelihood of of donating the organ what's what's the cause of that disparity so there's a um a, a, the, so here you go into sort of the ethical cultural um sort of discussions and um, so there's a lot of uh, misconceptions a lack of 
um, maybe an understanding, less lack of exploration about mm. the per- permissibility of organ donation right. within uh, within sort of the BAME community. Uh, in particularly, um, it, it's, it's often a subject that's not readily discussed mm. uh, amongst uh, families, and so um, the last known sort of wishes of that individual ain't ain't sort of ascertained. So, and when the family are approached, then and it might well be that they they are not aware of their loved one's sort of position on organ mm. donation. Mm. Um, as well as actually a lack of understanding as to what organ donation entails uh, from, from so um, I mean the on the individuals waiting for a transplant uh, 32% of those are from the BAME community whereas all, of all the individuals who donate um, that um, the BAME community represents 70% the seven sorry 7% so you can see that marked disparity between yeah. the two and that then has consequences yeah because yeah. um, in, in order for donation to occur and transplantation to occur successfully, there's certain sort of matching, including genetic components mm. from that point, and the likelihood of having a match which who is from a um, similar sort of ethnic background is far greater compared to a different ethnic background. Yeah, so that yeah. has a, a knock-on effect in terms of, of if you are that individual who has the organ failure, mm. uh, in, uh, you're you end up waiting longer for potentially raw organ. Okay. And do, do you think, you mentioned cultural uh, cultural reasons for people not wanting to donate. Is it, is, it, is it cultural or is it because people haven't had a chance to, to talk about it? What's your kind of, what's your take on this? I think, I think it's actually um, both, if I can say. Um, and it's difficult to sort of tease out the two because... Um, part of sort of uh, the sort of automatic sort of um, viewpoint is that oh, is correct uh, is incorrect uh, sort of uh, whether it's uh, from religious or cultural aspect. I think it's not permissible. Mm. Yet um, I wonder how many people have actually thought about it or researched it, as as sort of already shown by your mm. short video clip, um, and how many people have actually sought the opinion of. Uh, uh, the religion, mm-hmm. religious sort of leaders or the chefs from that sure. point of view. Sure. Um, and we, within we, families. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry to interrupt you, Dr. Omar. We're going to have to go to a, a very short break. And when we come back, we'd like to continue with this discussion and talk about children as well after the short break. Welcome back to The Health Show. Um, we were talking to Dr. Omar before the break around the subject of organ donation. And one of the things that we were discussing just before we went off air is the issue of cultural um, aspects of organ donation amongst people of colour, amongst people in the BAME, BAME community. Dr. Omar, oh, welcome back. Uh, you, we were talking a little bit before the break about this. Where, what's, what, if you had to sum this up, what, what, where are we at with all of this? Is it a cultural thing? Is it a communication thing? Is it misconception? Where are you at with this? I, 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 it's my opinion that I think there's probably a component of all of those. Hmm. There's a lot of misconception as well as to what organ donation or organ transplant involves. Mm-hmm. It's often a taboo subject within a, uh, our society in terms of discussion, and yet uh, we inevitably, I believe, all of us within this community either have experience or know of uh, an individual, individuals who've experienced, for example, kidney failure, just because the BAME community are at increased risk of certain conditions, including renal failure. Yeah. So it's inevitable that within every community that mm. we have uh, a high proportion. How we look at it from one side in terms of the recipient, but in turn, we often don't look at it from a donation point of view. Mm. And, and that's that's essentially if, if if my message could be summed up in uh, a couple of sentences is actually seek the information from authentic sources mm-hmm. so for example there's the nhsbt website which mm-hmm. has a lot of information related to the processes the law change use that there's a lot of misinformation um that spread through various sort of social platforms such as uh, mm-hmm. sort of whatsapp groups and such like 
and I think that uh, what I feel is that it's her job to sort of seek the appropriate information and, and then make that discussion, you know, sort of decision, have that discussion within families, within communities. Um, obviously, I've got a biased view in view of my um, sort of particular opinion, but I'm not here necessarily to say that um, you have to donate. What I'm saying is that uh, please seek the authentic sources in terms of the information, as well, sure. whether that's religious as well as the medical aspect, as well as the law change. Okay. I mean, I'd, I'd like to come to come on to the issue of children very shortly because obviously that's your that's your your main speciality. But I think people perhaps we ought to we ought to differentiate slightly for the viewers is there are two from an ITU perspective. There's two two types of patients that that you will see effectively. One will be um, some kind of chronic illness or somebody who's had major surgery or something and has been in ITU and unfortunately, um, you know, is, is un we're, we're unable to save them. The other is traumatic injury. So we're looking at things like um, uh, basically car crashes or, or, or similar. Um, do you, is there a difference between the two, do you think, in your experience with dealing with relatives and family? Um, it's... It's slightly different, but at the same kind of things, each individual that we, each patient is an individual, each family mm. would be an individual. Mm. So the approach and sort of the discussions would be tailored towards that particular patient. Mm. Um, it's um, often a tragic situation that we having these discussions in. One of the important points for me to put across is that in situations where the ongoing treatment is futile, and uh, the outlook is very sort of uh, that it's inevitable that the person and the, the patient is unfortunately not going to survive. It's important to remember that organ donation doesn't influence the decision to say, for example, stop the ventilator. So that shouldn't yeah, be the reason or that definitely is not the reason why, um, for example, a, a sort of ongoing treatment uh, might be stopped. That is a completely different component. So that's important to sort of decipher between the two and sort of categorically separate the mm. two. As a part of the end of life pro process, for example, we offer uh, pastoral care, for example, we might ask the mom to come along. As a part and parcel of that, we have the discussions about organ donation, whether, mm. whether it's the right thing for that particular individual, particularly that family, and then hence that decision is taken forward. Right. So it's important to appreciate and understand that the, the withdrawal of life treatment or actually the diagnosis of death by neurological uh, criteria or what is referred to as brainstem death mm -hmm. has in itself nothing to do with organ donation. That's completely um, a separate process and that wouldn't uh, necessarily, the decision to make organ do, uh, go for organ donation wouldn't necessarily hasten that or influence that Understood. directly. Understood. I mean, just really coming on to your speciality, Dr. Armour, because if, if this is a difficult and emotive and uh, ethical and moral subject that we're talking about now, in general, when it comes to children, it's even more emotive. Um, children are your speciality uh, as a paediatric ITU consultant. Um, what's your experience of, because I mean, children come in, there's obviously children who are, who are unfortunately and sadly not going to make it. And then you have to have a difficult conversation around organ donation with their parents. And then you've got children who are in a very, very, who are very, very sick because they need an organ and they need to be a recipient. Do you want to share some of your experience with this, of this, with us? Yeah. Yes, uh, it, it's it's always difficult. Uh, it's never easy, and regardless of how long you do this job, it's never easy. If and it has the same effect on you, a child's death, uh, approaching the family, the family's mm. um, distress and tragedy from that. We see children die whilst they're waiting for. An organ. Uh, children, uh, particularly smaller children, wait um, far longer uh, even compared to adults uh, for uh, organs such as heart and uh, lungs simply because um, they, in order for that to happen there needs to be a similar sized organ, i.e. another child needs to pass away. I'm often humbled by um, parents who take the decision of donating um, in the scenario of their tragedy. Mm. It's, it's, it's a completely selfless decision that they make um, because they're thinking about that the child's um, 
sort of mental con condition and from their tragedy they find a certain degree of solace uh, that knowing that mm. their child has potentially saved the life uh, of another child or even an adult mm. uh, because some of the children's organs can also go to adults as well mm. um, so it's extremely humbling when you when you see that and um uh, each and every time i'm taken aback uh, by that when parents make that decision but at the same kind of things we also see children who um die whilst waiting for a heart transplant um die for, whilst waiting for a liver or lung transplant mm. or are, are dependent on dialysis um, and often you say that uh, dialysis is a short-term way of supporting mm. the body what's kidneys but that has consequences as well mm. as con long-term consequences so the longer you're on dialysis the more likely you are to have sort of ongoing medical uh, problems yeah. that are irreversible so all of these sort of uh, keeping all that in mind and um, that is essentially the essence why um organ donation is a particular interest of mine in in, in what i do um, and i believe in sort of promoting that discussion regardless of the community setting we've got every community in this uh, in this country should be having this discussion um as i say i've got a particular view my, on myself but i think it going back seeking authentic mm. information, authentic facts, mm. and having that discussion within the family, within the community is essential. Dr. Omar, a lot of people will find this a very uncomfortable and very difficult conversation to have. And it's almost one of those ones where we almost think, I don't really want to think about this, I don't want to think about this, because we're always thinking about, you know, we, want, uh, we, we all want to live a long and healthy life, we want our children to live a long and healthy life. Where, where would, what would your advice be as somebody who's seen the, the back end of this, seen the, 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 the tragic end of this? If you were talking to, if you could give some advice to the viewers about how to start this conversation and what kind of things to think about. I think, again, it very much depends on each and every family as to how they approach this in turn, and each uh, each individual have a particular view about it. Um, we, we discuss a lot of things in um, inevitably, uh, although we wouldn't, uh, a lot of people uh, find it distressing talking about the potential death of a loved one or even considering our own death um, scares us to a certain uh, extent. Mm. Um, the, the, the law change um, precipitated a lot of sort of media campaign. Um, uh, so you might see some adver uh, sort of adver uh, advertisements on TV, mm -hmm. or even, for example, when you come to renew your your, t your uh, driver's license, there's often a question related to yeah. uh, organ donation upon that. Mm -hmm. So these are all prompts um, for you to think about. Okay, what is my viewpoint? Actually, the first, well, the very first sort of step, I think, is actually um, a self-reflection. Is like, actually, have I got, have I got an opinion about this? Mm. And if so, what it is? What is it? And what is it based upon? Mm -hmm. Because before you have that discussion, you should, you should so, surely have actually thought about it yourself. Mm. So I think the very first step is actually starting thinking about it. It's like, what is my viewpoint upon this? Uh, what would I want? What wouldn't I want? And what is that based upon? Is it based upon information that I overheard? Is it based upon information mm. that I believe is authentic? Mm. So that, I think, is in essence, essence the first step. Inevitably, again, as I say, every community would have someone who's waiting for a transplant. Um, and that, again, should uh, be a stimulus for um, that discussion within mm. that community as to yeah. what is our standpoint in it. Because mm. mm. I think the, 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 the worrying factor from a, from a main point of view is the fact that 32% of people versus 7, 30% of recipients versus 7% of donors is a very, very big gap. And I know that's a number but obviously there's a lot, a lot of conversations to be had. Would you believe we're coming towards the end of our time uh, this evening, Dr. Armour? Um, do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share with the viewers uh, about what's your key message really to, to people watching this programme tonight in the, in the last minute that we have? I mean, I mean my final message, which I'll, I'll just reiterate, is that please uh, have that discussion. Please have a thought 
uh, around organ donation as to what your viewpoints are and um, have that discussion with your families within your communities within your uh, whether that's community leaders whether it's within your sort of religious um, uh, leaders as well please have that discussion and uh, let it be an informed discussion and informed decision that you make yeah absolutely Dr. Thomas, it's been a, it's it's flown by as always as it always does on the health show. It's been an absolute pleasure having you. It, um, really, do come back and join us um, to talk about any other subject relating to ITU. It's, it's been a pleasure having you. Thank you so much for this really enlightening enlightening information. Um, that's Dr. Omar Aziz. He's the he's the lead on organ donation at uh, Bristol Bristol Children's Hospital. He's a pediatric ITU consultant. If you'd like to, to find out any more about organ donation, please do go to the NHS website. If you want to think about it from a religious perspective, you're very, very welcome. Please do contact um, uh, our alum this evening at M Mufti Youssef, who's on tonight at 9 p.m. I'm sure he'll be very happy to hear from you. Uh, thank you so much for watching today. Great to be with you again. Jazakallah. Salaam alaikum.